Good morning, YouTube. We are back at Exotic Power and Performance, and we're gonna work on the 5 to 9 some more today. We're gonna get the valve cover gaskets changed. Should be pretty fun. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? That depends on what your definition of fun is. Yeah, it may suck, actually. It's probably gonna suck. Actually, it definitely will suck. The valve cover gaskets, not my favorite thing on these cars. This has been a, this has been a rough one, man. Yeah, it has. It's a real pain in the ass on this car. Yeah. Well, anyway, my name is Dan. This is Exotic Power Performance, like I said. So if you need any sort of service on exotic cars, as you can see, they kind of have a lot of various cars and stuff. So Josh is your man. Go check them out. Let's start wrenching. I'm gonna, I want to get to work today. I want to do some, I'm gonna actually get something done today. We got most of the valve cover bolts out. We got like the rear, rear, rear ones. We got to get those. And of course, we got to get all that wiring and crap out of the way. Uh, this is where it's going to really suck. Hi, Josh. First wrench of the day. Mm. The judge was like, I saw that. I was if it was a convertible, I'd buy it. I'm like, <laughs> convertibles are just <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Everybody wants a convertible until it's time to do convertible things. All right. <laughs> yeah, the Ferrari DTC boxes, DCT boxes are kind of an exception to that. <laughs> That's what I said for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence on my 458. Well, but it's the similar conversation, right? There's a bunch of them that really had a lot of problems. Well, I also think it's like the people that do donuts and dumb shit blow them out. Uh, that definitely happens, but the other thing is a lot of the issues have to do with uh, that, just... The, that uh, sensor. The sensor's going bad, which like any manufacturing, right, you got some inconsistency in that, right? There's an error rate, so a certain percentage of those are always going to be problematic, whereas a certain percentage will always be just fine. And then you got the cars that weren't fine and got repaired. Maybe the repair technique wasn't perfect, so there's still some problems hiding there. But like in your car, your car's got a shitload of miles on it. Before you got it, it's got a shitload more on it, and the gearbox... And it was driven hard as uh-huh. And the only problem that Gearbox has ever really had is you cutting the <laughs> pipe. <laughs> I would say that oops, <laughs> machines that are used more than they're not generally yeah. are better. Very common knowledge, the airplanes that we worked on, the ones that flew all the time never had any issues with them. It was the ones that sat for three weeks yeah. between flights, they'd go up around at Mach 1 pulling 10 G's not 10 G's but you yeah know, come back and they're broke as hell and yeah let that be a message to all supercar owners right yeah drive, drive your car yeah drive your car. do it like Honestly, Dan drive hey I've said that so much <laughs> yep. and it's sad because most of them just don't my my experience with the cars have been if you put four or five thousand miles a year on one of these cars you're not gonna spend any more on repair and maintenance than someone who doesn't drive the car at all right once you get over that, because the cars do have some race car mentality and some cheap part Fiat parts in them that will expire prematurely. So if you start driving it 10,000 miles a year, you will have some crap, you know, that just kind of goes bad from usage. But if you're doing four or 5,000 miles a year, that's enough frequency that the car is, you know, it's seeing heat cycles and it's being used like a car was designed to be used and you're gonna spend the same money as someone who has bizarre problems and normal maintenance just due to time. Especially the older ones. Oh yeah. This Timmy's 348, the only shit we've fixed on that car since the major is shit that was already wrong with it before we did the major and we just ran out of time and budget for it. Yeah. You know, the three or four things we've fixed were pre-existing issues. They weren't new issues. So we sorted those out, and what has Tim had to fix since we finished he all He drives that? the shit out of that car, though, doesn't He's he? He's put a lot of miles on that car in the last year and a He's half. He's going to be one of the rare people that actually mileages out a, uh, a, a belt major. service. Well yeah. done, Tim. Well done. <laughs> well, and the nice thing is, is the next time it's a belt slap. Yep. We don't have to rebuild the whole damn drivetrain next time. Right. How the f*** do I get to this one? Last one. It's literally the last one. <laughs> he knows which one you're talking about already. I know. Yeah. <laughs> which side are you on? This one, the one with all the shit in the way. All the way down there, yeah? Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yep. That one's fun. <laughs> I don't enjoy this process on this particular model of Ferrari. No. Um, if you wiggle and get the cam sensor out, it'll give you a little bit more space. Yeah, no, it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be damned. All right, I understand how much I learned from that experience. Yeah. yeah. Like, you don't 
just start a business and succeed the first try. Almost yeah. no one. A couple of the places that I've worked at that I feel are really badly managed, I think to myself sometimes, these guys have been around for 20 years doing what they do. And I think one of the reasons why they're so badly managed is because they're just successful enough that they're comfortable with how they do they, things and yeah, they, they don't, don't have ever, to worry about being efficient. Right. And yeah, they don't learn how to improve. So I try to tell myself that the advantage I have mm. from failing my first time is I learned a bunch of shit about how not to do things and it forced me to spend a few years studying and learning and you know developing my business skill set to better consider my next effort. Better yeah. trust, trust someone who has a few failures under their belt, right? Any good mechanic will tell you the same thing. Half of what I know about these cars is from, you know, Fuck making mistakes, you know, <laughs> having problems and stuff. And you, right. you know, you learn that these are not, you know, viable approaches or perspectives or, or understandings. And you, you have learn to... that something's a 10 mil bolt rather than a hex head. <laughs> 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 So you're not ah. there with the wrong tool in there after forever. spending 10 minutes in there with the wrong ah. socket. And know? then arguing with somebody who's been doing it for 20 years. Sounds like they're talking Dan, about talking someone. About you. I'm aware. <laughs> Adam's talking about you. I'm just he's aware, but he's focused. <laughs> he's no. doing all the talking. <laughs> Suck my balls. <laughs> I told him all that. they're chocolate salty balls. <laughs> Everybody have seen my balls, they're big and salty and brown. If you ever need a quick pick me up, just stick my balls in your mouth. I told him when I came out here I wasn't going to be much help, I was just going to be distracting. So. That's fine. I like distraction. Come out here with the drink and just shit on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must be drinking that cheap American beer. Some Miller Lite beer. And they got like a swirly neck now, so it swirls the beer as you're chugging it straight out of the bottle. I was like, oh. what kind of garbage ass bullshit American as beer needs a special bottleneck to make your beer taste better? Just make a beer that's not garbage, you goddamn rednecks. <laughs> I like my Miller Lite. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, how do you like the twirly <laughs> bottleneck? It's Does pretty... it make it taste better? No, but it comes down faster. Does it tickle your throat? <laughs> <laughs> so you can drink 1.5 times more shit yeah. beer in the same amount of Miller time. Miller Lite is so disgusting. <laughs> what? Is it? Yeah. Oh, you guys suck. <laughs> it is the most disgusting beer I've ever had in my life. I don't know, man. I've had a lot of beer and I've had a lot of foreign beer. That's overseas. true. You, you came from the military, so yeah. you drank some a you know, wide variety of cheap yeah. garbage. Miller. Wow. Is disgusting. I'm guessing it's some sort of local pride thing, right, Dan? Like you, you grew up in the place where Miller originated from, so you just kind of naturally gravitate towards it. No, I actually do have logic behind it. Okay. So like, there's basically like the three big American beers: Bud, Miller, and Coors, right? Right. I don't like Bud because I think it has a certain connotation. Like you're a certain type of person who drinks Budweiser. Like Budweiser. what you eat with your sister. Or what something? you're saying is you're not cool enough no. to bro out with the Bud Light drinkers. Yes, yes. Coors, I can't drink because the company that owns Coors or the people that own Coors, they're a bunch of ah. pieces of shit. Yeah, they're just miserable. Yeah. So I can't give them my money. So I can relate. Well, and then did Bud did Bud Skip sell out to while. some? Did Bud yeah, sell Inbev. To a foreign company? Yeah, InBev. Belgium. Right? Belgium. Yeah. Then how come their beer hasn't gotten any better? Why would the you Belgium? change something? You can't. Like you can't change the, the taste because then people aren't going to drink it. It's like Coke. Then, then it's going to be you a know? foofy, foofy <laughs> European beer like Bex. <laughs> Stella with their fancy commercial. Stella. Which also tastes like Coors. <laughs> a little drippy drip. Oh, yeah. All over this one. Yeah. That's where my leak was. Sure was. The back corner of that? Yeah, it's the uh, third, no, second to the last bolt. Was that leaking on the ground? Is that what well, you're no, it's leaking on the side of the block. I can see a little oh, bit right. of wetness up top. Like maybe it was the uh, cam sensor, right the lower cam sensor O-ring leaking. Hmm. You notice how glossy the cam cover is all around that sensor? Yeah. How the hell am I going to get to that damn thing with this hose there? Hose always in the way. Where my hose at? Snoop Dogg intern. Where my hose at? I haven't seen them. Yeah, because like they'll bore scope the engines every so many flight hours. There's caps that you pull and you can bore scope the core and everything like that. Can we that's not a... not talk about this before I have to fly tomorrow? Oh, dude. 
<laughs> Here's more engines. You you have at least one other one. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Flying the plane isn't technically difficult, it's right? Landing. It's landing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all the ship. <laughs> the, the part where it's not going just sailing through the air, the rest yeah. of it's what they train on because that's all the hard shit. Have you ever seen the videos of what it takes to actually... Like the like, stress test? Yeah. yeah. Once you see how much abuse a plane can take, yeah. and then you see what little shit... Because it's just, it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But they're fine. I've been in a, I've been in a plane... We were coming to LAX. We were in a seven, probably like an old school 737, maybe even like a DC-9. This was like in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And they put us in too close to a heavy. So they had us coming in behind like a 747 or DC-10 or something. Of turbulence. Tons of turbulence. We had the gears down, flaps down. We're on final approach and the final <laughs> plane just goes boom, almost like 90 degrees sideways and then drops like a bomb. People Holy going, ah! <laughs> screaming shit, and I'm like only like four or five rows back. Instruments are going, dee -dee 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 -dee. you know, like Dee -dee -dee, pull up, pull up, and I'm like, oh shit, you know? like this is not good. And the pilot like regains control, straightens it out. He's like, Arr! he's like, you can hear him because this is like. He's bitching at flight yeah, control. Yeah, and so then he like <laughs> literally starts cursing him out. And, like he's like, God damn it! That's not, not, not. And he gets on a thing like right after we land, and he's like, sorry about that, folks. They. uh Control tower screwed up and has way too close to heavy and blah They're blah supposed blah. To have five wow. Miles. Yeah, and so he's like, and so we hit their turbulence. And I apologize for that. Like, you know, da, 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 da. And I was like, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah, that was sweet. Go on Holy YouTube shit. That's a and, wicked pilot and look right for there. the yeah. Boeing 787 wing stress test. Yeah, yeah. they clamped it down yeah. before it was a. Thing, yeah. and they pull the wings up and I mean the wings go up like this before oh, wow. they shear. That's sick. <laughs> so that Isn't just that funny because when you're flying and you see them <laughs> flapping yeah. you're like yeah. this <laughs> thing's going to rip itself <laughs> apart. Well oh, you know what's crazy. But it's engineered the flex that oh, yeah. much so that way it doesn't shear off. You know there's only like five bolts that hold a wing on an airplane. Really? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> I swear to God, but they're dude. really big bulk. Oh uh, no, they're like inch and a quarter is all they are. Right on. On an F-15, I think there's, if I remember, three or four, and that bitch goes up there at Mach one, pulling like seven Gs and shit, yeah. and it's only got like three or four. It might be five, but yeah, there ain't a whole lot. Most people would be terrified if they knew how little held an airplane together. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, how else do you keep it light enough to yeah. fly efficiently? All right, where are we at, Dan? Been a lot of chatting here and wrenching, but yeah, what's the progress? We need this one last bolt, and it's a totally horrible position. Okay, and then these will come off. Yep, this is like getting those back molars. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What are you doing? Just taking out the wisdom teeth here. We're replacing the valve cover cast. Let's leaking? hope that that whole thing goes better than it did on the 430. Yeah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, not another one, it's another hose. Whole block's moving. Yeah. That's what happens when you don't have a transmission. Wow. Is this the cam positioning sensor? Didn't that kick our ass when we did the valve cover on your car? Yeah. Got Probably it. Yes. A little brute force? No. No? <laughs> I go in. Wow. Some precision work. That's <laughs> teamwork. Nice. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. I can't get it in. That's what she said. Or he said. Nice. Well done, boys. Pain in the butt. Jam the shit out of my thumb. Damn it. What are you trying to get off? That vacuum line? Look. Right there. Yes. God. Well done. Damn it. A few scars, a few bruises, but let's see it, Adam. Wow. Well, man, I know it hasn't ran in a while, so all the oil has drained, but man, that isn't clean shape some quality ferrari guts here wow all right I mean, by the way we can't be america sponsoring this that. video these parts are from a can't be america these are the spark plug gaskets it's these right here Let's see that is garbage uh that is part number 223982 left hand valve cover gasket Part number 208923. Huh. Obviously, that's this part, right? Oh, it's like smashed in there. There. Nice.
Goodbye. What's that, Adam? This engine is ridiculously clean. Good. I would hope so. Yep. And not like any marks or anything? No, there's no marring or scarring or... All right, I'm getting learned on by Josh, so we shouldn't have put these on yet. <laughs> now, you see how wet they are with oil already? Yeah. So, what people don't realize is the rubber actually makes a, a physical bond with the two metal surfaces, mm -hmm. and that's part of what seals. It's not just the pressure of them being clamped down. So, when you have oil on there, it can't make a bond, so the seal's not going to be as good as it can be. There should not be oil on okay. the gasket. You want the opposite of oil on the gasket. Oil be gone? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I hose down the whole cover because same thing when we flip this upside down and go to put it on, you don't want whatever residual oil there is in the cover leaking all over your fresh gaskets and stuff. Because it's gonna, it's not until you get heat in the engine and stuff where the rubber starts to actually bond, right? Just bolting it down isn't technically sealing it. This is why in the shop you get a bill for shop supplies. Yep. Shop supplies includes this can of brake clean that you now own. No longer my brake clean. Nice purchase, Dan. <laughs> Small investment. Wow, done. And then I like to take shop air and blow oh. it off a little bit. Like it yeah, will yeah. evaporate, but it's nice to blow it out. Yeah, we're sure. Adequate. All right, where's your fresh gasket? Right there, but I already got them all nasty. Should I spray those too? Yep, we're gonna spray those. Dan just bought himself another bottle of Bright Clean. <laughs> oh, I'm sure when you get them in bulk, they're cheaper. Yeah. yeah. And what I find interesting is when you wipe them down, you'll see a lot of black come off, which is all the mold release and stuff from when they were <laughs> manufactured. Yeah. See that? Mm hmm. So I like to do this even on new gaskets that you didn't get oily because of that you get all this mold release material off. Some engineer chemist is welcome to argue with me on the internet over this theory. Oh they will. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Rule number 29 right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hashtag real 29. Go buy the t-shirt. Funniest thing is Lopers bought the most of the Loper shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Loper thing to do. <laughs> He, he, he bought one for each person in his family. <laughs> he would. <laughs> I love that guy. And this is not to seal the gaskets, right? This is just so to help it. hold them on. So we're just using like a, almost like a glue. Yep. What is this called? It's just silicone sealer. So then same thing here. Put a little dabber there. A little dab dab. Couldn't find the hole for a second there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's <laughs> the problem when they get a little bit old like this. It gets harder to they find dry the hole. Out. Yeah. Oh, have I got a song for you guys? Wrong hole. Wrong hole? Seriously, a song called Wrong Hole. No, it's exactly what you think it means. <laughs> <laughs> You're super unhelpful, Adam. <laughs> I know. It's not surprising with your military background, right? <laughs> Sticking a little better. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We have a government trained mechanic here and he's the least helpful guy of all. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Sam. When you put it that way, it's just that much better. America's best and brightest right here. And we gotta clean the top of the head. Yep, same thing you wanna spray brake cleaner on your rag and then wipe all the oil off the top of the cylinder head. Plus it takes Ooh. off a little bit of the remnant of the old uh Oh yeah. Well it's coming off. Good spot. Nice and dirty. The rim always gets real dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and see the little bit of silicone that's dabbed here? Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll want to make sure they get that silicone off the cylinder heads because we're going to dab fresh silicone there. So now you're ready to slide it back you in. You said put a little silicone? Yep. See these little joints right out. here? Wait, there's a joint. Yep. That's where the timing cover and the cylinder head meet, and there is a sheet metal gasket in here. But we dab just a little bit of silicone on each one of those joints That's to help. Stuff? Yep, same stuff. The gray stuff. Yep. Doctor? Doctor. 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 Doctor? 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 Doctor. Doctor? Doctor. Just a little smear. Yep. Maybe you want to leave it a little high. Okay. 
That'll be fine. I don't like, like on the Hondas and stuff, some of the other cars where you have these Half Moons, Volkswagens and stuff, a lot of times we'll put silicone around these, but because of the tight clearance in here, when I've tried that in the past, oh, usually you, everywhere. Yeah, you end up wiping it off and all over the camshafts trying to fit it in there. Mm -hmm. And realistically, like in this case, this car's 10 years old now, and it's just now we leaking a bit. Yeah. So to me, it's kind of, you're just making extra work for your for the next guy. So yeah. when he goes to pull this apart. Oh, it's gonna stick in. Yeah, yeah, and then really he's gonna have to get back in there and try to clean all that out, which is a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. So just assume that you would be the next person doing it. Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. So we're just gonna leave it El Natural and clean. So this is really tricky because you gotta make sure that you don't mm -hmm. grab the gasket and pull it off the cam cover while you're sliding it in. Oh, no, we completely caught the gasket and oh, pulled it off. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I think you're gonna have to disconnect a lot more stuff to actually get this thing to go together properly. I think you've got way too much stuff still. Go ahead and just pull it out. We're not gonna be able to fix the gasket. There's the culprit. Yeah. It fell off. So we're gonna wanna remove some of the more hoses here. I think so. A lot of times I actually pull the main intake manifold and take all of this stuff off. That, that one plastic hose is a notch. That's not working. Really? Oh, did it come? Right, there you go. Stay? Oh, now we gotta get these things. You get like Ooh. two fingers. That's all you get. That's all she needs. Yeah. I'll reach around. <laughs> Here's that one. This day's probably had the most stupid shit, I think. It ranks up there with the uh, 599. Where'd it go? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cart Nigel? Hey Josh, is there a little gremlin down there? <laughs> <laughs> Have you watched the <laughs> oh. Sasha oh, Baron Cohen's new movie? Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Boy, huh? Jesus Christ. Well, you thought I just could say some offensive shit. <laughs> Are you talking about Borat? That was hilarious. Dude, that guy. I don't and know. he was after everybody in that movie, too. I don't idolize celebrities because they're just people that need attention more than the average person. Like, talk about narcissists, but that dude is clever and has the balls the size of North America. The only way you can get away with being that insulting to anybody is to do it to everybody. Yeah. Whoa! Oh. Yahtzee. Pew bolt. Pew. <laughs> I call it anxiety porn. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, I say you're you constantly do like, oh god, oh no, no, no. Right. And you just you like, like. Is he gonna get stabbed to death this time on camera? <laughs> He seems to be just smart enough to pick people who aren't very likely to stab him to death. I think some of it too is the things that he rolls out of his mouth are just so heinous that they actually put people in shock and they, they get they caught off guard. Yeah, they they can't react. They're in genuine shock. Do you understand how boring and lifeless most people's lives are? Do you way happen to know the do torque specs off the top? Of yeah, your head? it's kind of a strange concept. Yeah, for doing yeah. way less, and they live in a completely no. alternate reality than you do. Okay, we'll have to look that uh, up. If you take them the 90 inch pounds, it'll be fun. 90 inch pounds? Yeah. Where's the... Because you notice the, the metal cam cover bottoms out position. on the head. <laughs> I gotta get this. Josh, don't move. Okay. <laughs> Low bridge. Dan, this is your thumbnail, Dan. <laughs> Actually, dude, get back a few feet. Yep. That will be my thumbnail. Wait.